Uh, hello, uh, I'm Kevin. Uh, I'm presenting uh, Navigating Community Health through Comparison. So uh, this presentation is based on uh, research that we've been doing for the past three years. We've conducted uh, approximately 80 interviews. We've, uh, we've conducted approximately 80 interviews with people interested in community health. Uh, many of you in this room were, were part of those interviews, so thank you. Uh, I'd like to acknowledge uh, Sean and Matt, who are both part of the research team, and uh, Georg, who's not on the list, is uh, probably conducted about half of those interviews. Uh, so a little bit of background on me. Uh, I've been working on the Chaos Project for about three years. Uh, I'm a PhD student at the University of Nebraska, Omaha. Uh, and as a PhD student, uh, I need to make sure that I'm progressing and assessing how well I'm doing. Uh, but how can I measure that? How can I know? Uh, interestingly, as a PhD student, uh, I'm judged almost completely by the number of publications I have. Uh, that metric is tied to my ability to get a job in academia when I'm done. Uh, so how do I know how many publications I need, right? How do I know uh, what quality those publications need to be? Uh, one way to do that is to actually look at my peers, right? Uh, and we call that social comparison, right? So social comparison is part of human nature, right? We assess who we are by, by looking at our peers, the people around us, right? I'm taller than you. I'm shorter than you. Uh, you have a nice beard. Uh, perhaps I aspire to have a beard as nice as yours. <laughs> so, uh, by comparing ourselves to others, we can get a sense of how well we're doing. Right? Uh, we compare ourselves because it provides us a way to measure our current status, uh, identify aspirations. It it allows us to uh, identify people or things with which we would like to like model ourselves after. Right? So. Uh, but we don't actually, we don't live in isolation, right? Teams and organizations are inherently social. Uh, and the comparative process doesn't really stop at the individual level, right? So in our interviews, we talk to a lot of people about how they, they use and define community health metrics. And in almost every single one of them, they all mention comparison. Uh, so Communities use social comparison to understand community health uh, for the same reason that individuals do. Uh, and once again, the, the reason why we do that is pretty clear, right? We want to know how well we're doing, what our status is. We want to identify goals and things that we'd like to become. Uh, but knowing why we compare doesn't really tell us how we compare. So within the interviews that we've conducted, I'd like to kind of provide you some insight into how we use social comparison to define metrics. Uh, so the first step is we find communities to compare with, right? So one thing that continually came up in the interviews is that we, uh, we like to make apples to apples comparisons, right? We want to compare communities that are similar to ourselves or similar to the projects we're on. Uh, and there's an aversion to comparing communities that we, we think may be different. So the search for comparable communities often begins with kind of a, a broad community generalization. And then we narrow the focus down to similar key components between communities. Uh, community members rely on their personal histories to understand and, and give context to these community health indicators. Uh, and Interestingly, uh, almost everyone we talked to cautioned us that, that their project was completely unique and uh, <laughs> defies comparison. Uh, so, so while we can't maybe compare one project to another, uh, what we can do is compare similar community components, right? Such as key processes that may be similar, or we may be able to identify one or two health indicators that we can take from community to community. So when we narrow our focus to these similar components, uh, we begin to define health metrics that allow us to compare our communities within a similar context. Through this comparison, community members become aware of how other communities are using health metrics. 
this awareness leads to adoption. Uh, the adoption of health metrics actually leads to a process of creation and adoption uh, that's iterative. It just builds on itself. Uh, but while we, while we start to adopt similar health metrics, the interpretation of these health metrics remains a community or uh, organizational issue. Right? We can only interpret it at our community level. So by identifying and defining health metrics, what we're doing is we're, we're actually creating uh, some uniformity in the way that we make these comparisons. Right? So we do this by identifying health metrics that may work for uh, a broad set of communities. Uh, they may be transferable across several communities. But when we do that, we, we exclude and we ignore other possible metrics. Uh, so it's really important to remember that uniformity is going to cause us to miss possibly potentially important health indicators. Uh, however, we have to create this uniformity uh, because it, in creating this uniformity, we create similarities that allow us to make these comparisons. And then uh, further, uh, one of the interesting things we noticed about uh, comparison from the interviews is that there is often an element of competition in it, right? Uh, and competition requires a similar set of rules, uh, a level playing field. So to create that level playing field, we, we form similar associations uh, so that we can begin to compete with one another. So, for example, uh, you wouldn't compare a basketball team to a football team. Right? They, play by, they play by different rules. Uh, and you wouldn't, play, uh, you wouldn't compare a, a premier football team uh, to a, a youth football team in your, in your town. Right? The, the level of competition is different. So in open source, the health metrics we define for our communities uh, provide a competitive signal of value, uh, which allows us to say things like, that project over there, that, that's very successful. Or, uh, my project is better than yours, which uh, is probably something we all think, but maybe you're too polite to say. Uh, <laughs> So the adoption of these shared health metrics uh, from comparison gives us a sense of where we're at, uh, which allows us to make better decisions about the use, uh, whether to contribute, or whether we want to invest in, uh, in an open source uh, community. These shared health indicators create a common language that we can use to provide directions or help us find the way or help others find the way. So where do we go from there or here? Uh, if you want to know if a community is healthy, who better to ask than the locals? Right? They understand their community better than anyone else, and they usually know the best restaurants in town, right? Uh, so when we're navigating open source communities, we find these, these health metrics, and these health metrics can act as reference points that, that can help get us to where we need to go. And as we define these community health metrics, we're often going to revisit communities that we think are healthy. Uh, and we're going to build maps to help others visit those communities. Uh, and building maps, I think, is, is why we're, we're all here today. So, uh, and that is actually, that is all I have for you. Thank you for listening to my talk. Do you want to do questions? You have 10 minutes. 10 minutes, wow. OK. Sure. <laughs> yes. Uh, I may have like, some doubt, but like, what are those common health metrics that you came up with? Oh, that's a good question. <laughs> uh, so what are the common health metrics that, uh, that, I, that, that I was referring to? So, uh, so we, we do have some. We have identified some common health metrics from that, and many of them have actually become part of the, uh, the, the chaos release health metrics. Uh, but in general, this was uh, a presentation more on how we define them, but not what, which ones were defined. So I, I don't have that list for you. However, uh, if you're really interested, I could probably scrape it and, and, and give you the list of all the metrics that were mentioned.
for no more questions and we're ahead of schedule.